Okay, ladies and gentlemen, first off, uh, this is Kino Thomas, and I'd like to thank you for continuing to watch and support the channel. Uh, one of many channels, this is the Aviation Selection Test Prep, uh, or Test Battery Preparation. Uh, my name is Kino Thomas. Uh, I'm an airline transport pilot and a multi-engine instructor, instrument instructor, uh, for multi-engine engine, multi-engine aircraft, sorry about the but uh, again, I'd just like to thank you guys for watching, uh, staying in touch, getting in with the email list, and uh, just anybody else taking a ASTB, just tell them about me, um, and tell them about my videos, I'm here to help, um, and, and assist in any way I can here. Uh, today we're going to cover aviation and nautical information. Aviation, airplanes, and nautical information, mostly boating terms uh, for the most part, but uh let's jump right in here uh, we have an airplane and we need to be vaguely familiar with the parts or kind of, you know more a little more than vaguely familiar with the parts and uh, I also have a private pilot ground school uh, video that could be very very helpful in helping you guys get ahead or stay ahead ahead of the crowd but uh, here's all our various airplane parts and they're labeled but we're going to flow through them right now. Uh, first off, we have the fuselage. Now, the fuselage, there are five major components. The fuselage is one of them. Uh, the wings uh, here, we have a top view. You can see the wings here, and we'll get to that in a minute. But um, uh, the fuselage basically holds everything together uh, normally. Aircraft are built or designed different ways, and sometimes they look a little bit unusual to normal so um, but primarily the fuselage pretty much holds everything together the canyard canyard canner or canyard uh, is a flights control surface this is pretty much on a lot of a uh, newly designed aircraft this is not a typical flight uh, control surface but uh, it is on some aircraft Next, the wings. These support the airplane when the airplane is not on the ground. We have the cockpit. The cockpit is where the pilot, or in some aircraft, a pilot and a naval flight officer or a bombardier navigator may sit, or be in, uh, to abbreviate that. Uh, but the cockpit pretty much houses all the flight controls, flight instruments. Uh, it's the office for the pilot, if you would flaps and I didn't color these in here but the flaps are inboard flight you have the wing root and the wing tip it's the wing root it's the wing tip and the flaps they kind of in, extend together if you've ever looked out a window when the plane is about to land you can see the flaps extending these don't extend they just kind of wiggle these are ailerons and that was the next uh, flight control surface, the ailerons. Uh, the ailerons are they're responsible for rotating the airplane about its longitudinal axis. And, and again, I have videos um, in the private pilot section that will cover this. Here we have the winglet. Okay. And they're responsible for just reducing drag primarily um, what a lot of people really don't understand is that um, you have higher speed air flowing over the top of the wing than you do the bottom of the wing due to curvature and what happens normally is the airflow kind of goes out the side and then it does a little swirly thing well aerodynamically and I talked about this in my ground school this uh, helps stop drag or reduce drag so it makes the wing more efficient here we have the vertical stabilizer okay here it's kinda if we were looking from the top view would be very skinny we would, we would not be able to see it that well just like the horizontal stabilizer we can see it well looking top down but from the side we can't see it that well and that was our next one so vertical stabilizer up and down the horizontal stabilizers next side to side it's flat if we look at it from the side 
that we have a surface or control surface called the elevator and this is responsible for pitching a pitching motion um, about the lateral axis we have a rudder the rudder is the flight control surface that rotates the aircraft about the vertical axis and we have trim tabs in there now another thing that we need to be familiar with is the aircraft's dihedral or dihedral it is basically the upper angle angular uh, displacement of the wingtips normally if the dihedral was zero it, the wings would just go side to side but these are kind of angled upward and I'll give you some more examples here this aircraft is the King Air the dihedral is about 7 degrees where on a Cessna 172 the dihedral is about 2 degrees so you can see that we took a line and went from side to side we could see that the wings are kind of displaced this is what's called anhedral not dihedral dihedral's up anhedral's down and again we'll give you this is polyhedral because see the wing slightly comes up and then the wing tips are angled up as well so that's what we call a polyhedral and here we could see that F4 that aircraft was the F4 Phantom uh, this was the Aviate Harrier anhedral and then here are some more examples this is the F4 Phantom it had a polyhedral which means poly many more this is more than one dihedral is angled upward anhedral is downward and a gull wing think of a seagull you ever watch them fly you know their wings kind of go up at the start and they point downward a little bit so just some interesting things to be familiar with and now the nautical information you may get a boat like this as an example but if we're going to be sailors we need to know some nautical term terminology so here we go we have the bow and it looks like bow but it's pronounced bow now this is like gunwell but it's pronounced gunnel and it's the upper edge of a, of a boat side so it's the upper edge of the boat side um, let's come back a little bit this will be the gunnel it's the upper edge of the bolt boat side uh, the bow talked about that the gunnel looks like gunwell but it's gunnel this is a thwart now another thing if you get an example like this you see this flat piece going across and you really can't see looking at it from the top down but this will represent the thwart and a rower could actually sit on this um, but I just think it was like a poor illustration so let's just come back and here would be the thwart where some, a rower could sit down and row port side is the left side of the boat the stern is the rear of the boat the transom is a cross section of the stern and the starboard is the right side of the boat the hull is the body of the boat a stem is another uh, term but it's kind of like the, ex the extension is the stem kind of runs along the bottom it's like the backbone of the boat and then it comes out so it's the most forward part of the uh, bow which if you would um, and lighting uh, anti-collision lighting what's funny is that airplanes also have very similar anti-collision lighting but if you just look at this the left or port side of the boat will have a red indication the right side or starboard side would have a green light and the aft part or the stern would have a white light and it needs to be visible in this degree range all right so this will be the beam right and you should be able to see the light if I'm hanging out here if I'm a boater or a swimmer here I should be able to see this light from the front to about 22 and a half degree 22 and a half degrees aft of what we call, we'll call the beam point um, and then after that beam point then you know at the back end or the stern of the ship or boat I should be able to see the white light this whole range and strangely, uh, like I said, airplanes and boats are very, very uh, 
We use knot knots with airplanes, just like a boat uses knots. Airplanes do not use not, uh, miles per hour, which would be considered a statute mile. Uh, we use nautical miles, just like boats. So here's another illustration. A boat, you'd have a green light on the right, red light on the left, and a white light on the rear for anti-collision purposes. So at night, at night, if we saw a boat traveling from our left side to the right side, we would have, uh, we would be able to see the light on the stern, the masthead, we would be able to see it, and we would see a green light. If it was coming directly at us, we would see the masthead light, green, and red light. And if it was heading away from us, we would see the stern or the back of the boat, and we would just see a white light. So this kind of helps us maintain, uh, know what that ship or boat is doing for anti-collision purposes to stay away. If this guy was going from my left to right, I would probably just turn to the left a little bit so he could be out of my way and then, main, then return on my course or slow down and just let him pass. If I saw this picture, then I know that this boat is heading directly towards me and we're probably on a collision course. If I see this one, then I know I am behind the boat he's or she's heading away from me and uh, probably if I want to intercept it or catch it I have to increase speed if I could maintain it now like I said again aircraft same thing <laughs> which is funny red light on the left wing tip a green light on the right wing tip all right red left green right and then we have a white light on the uh, tail section Another thing aircraft would have is a rotating beacon and strobe lights as well, but we're not going to go into that at this point. So, um, I put the, I made an illustration of the boat and the airplane together so you could see red on the left, green on the right, white on the tail. Um, and I spoke earlier about how we use nautical miles like boats as pilots. We use nautical miles. We move in uh, a speed uh, calibration of knots. And uh, so this is back to the parts of the boat. Okay. We have our bow, gunnel, not gunwell, gunnel, starboard, starboard side, right side, hull, stern, rear, transcom, cross section of the boat, port, left side. And the stem we talked about, uh, which is basically it just it's the backbone of the boat. Um, and I'm just trying to think real quick if I'm forgetting anything, I, I, I don't believe so. So that was just a little small recap. So again, all you guys out there, keep studying, study hard. Uh, please like the video. And that wasn't supposed to show up, but it's okay. <laughs> Let's see, yeah, that wasn't supposed to show up, but that's fine. But I'd like to thank you all for watching. Uh, if this has been emailed to you, that means that you are on my uh, ASTB list. And um, if not, I just hope you like and subscribe to the video. I thank you guys for watching. Have a great 2016.